another way to locate fish in the winter or spring when the water's coming up and it's a, it's a tough situation trying to find fish is limb lines. I sometimes use some limb lines mostly as a way to locate some catfish activity. Kind of confirm or deny that there may be some fish moving through the area. So I'm going to show you how to do it fairly simply, safely. I'll show you how I do it this time of year. This is not the same as summer when you're going up in flooded timber and hanging a line just below the surface of the water off of a limb for small channel cats. This is searching bigger water. So it's going to be a different setup. I will show you first how to set. I'll show you second how to check. And then at a later moment, I will talk about a really highly recommended way to rig your gear. I just took one quick pass by this to make sure that I'm that is the edge of the uh, brush. It's a flat field. I'm not dropping a line into uh, some submerged trees. Looks all right. We're gonna we're gonna do it here. the boat off. We're going to do one thing at a time. We're not going to try to manage the boat position at the same time we're working on a separate line. We will have both hands available. What I'm saying is we're going to do one thing at a time. Number one, secure the boat. Just do that. That way, when you work on your lines, both hands free, you don't have to think. This bolt may find a different direction. There may be a gust of wind. There may be a change in the current. I'm not going to have to deal with that because I've secured the bolt first. Number two. Now that I can have full attention on this. I'm going to handle my gear. Let me get my line ready. Got my weight, I'm going to attach my hook. Again, I'll talk a little bit about the uh, setup uh, in another moment. Right now I'm showing you how to set your line. Okay. Boy, having a line with the hook in one hand is a very nice time to not have to be dealing with a boat drifting or or a line dragging across you because of boat position. Bait.
limb lines, I prefer live bait because live bait will stay fresh and probably living the entire day if you're going to have it set for up to 24 hours. Uh, don't have the appropriate size of live bait with me at the moment, so I'm going to use just a fresh cut bait. But live bait's a way to go on a line that you're going to leave for some time. Three. Attach the limb line. Identification tag, my Kentucky ID number, my Indiana ID number, name, every state along the Mississippi and the Ohio River, I assume, has the requirement that you have to have your identification on limb lines. That is true also of float lines, jugs, and trot lines. If you are license exempt for some reason, like you're too young or you're too old, military or whatever reason that you don't have to buy a license, you still have to have an identification on any line or device that you set free or leave tied to a tree or have floating. That's the number one mistake I see with people limb lining. They don't identify the owner of the lines. That's just the law of the land. Just do it. twice around the branch or the pole or whatever you're tying to and then three half hitches. Show you a little closer detail sometime, but that's perfect because that double wrap of the line around the solid object means tension will be absorbed by the line around the branch. And the friction of that tight line around the branch will provide all the resistance. So, you do the double wrap, you have a three half inches snugged up close. The knot is not absorbing any work or load itself, hardly, the branch. The knot keeps the line in position so that the line itself and the branch does all the work. The knot will not be stressed, it will not over tighten because it is not the main thing that is absorbing the tension. Number three, I'm gonna go ahead and place my line.
number one, similar process. Tie the boat. The boat is secured. I see it's pulling me this way. I don't want to be trying to wrestle with the branch holding the position. Number one, secure the boat. Hands free now to deal with my tackle. I'm not going to untie it yet because I don't know what's going to happen. But I'll deal with the tackle here. And there's a fish. Oh, that's a blue cat. Let me let me net this baby. I'm not doing this to bring fish home. I'm a catch and release. However, if you're having trouble at this time of year and you want some table fish, this is a great way to increase your uh, opportunity to get some because um, it's, it's just a different window into what's going on I didn't know I fished here the other day but I never knew this was a spot during high water until literally a couple days ago when on a whim literally on a whim was in the area decided to set a few lines for the heck of it this wasn't a place that I expected to be much of fish territory. I sure learned something. You can do the same. What this is is where the river coming across field but this is almost like a cul-de-sac. It comes up on this land mass and it kind of dead ends, so it kind of slowly has to circle back toward the drain area, back to the river. Gotta hook my finger there. So that's a, that's a nice, beautiful uh, blue cat. Uh, didn't know it was here. I wouldn't have found them using a fish finder, I don't believe, in this kind of situation. But I've got an additional fishing spot. Nice. That's beautiful. I'm going to pull this because I'm not going to be back here tomorrow. So... Number one, secured the boat. Number two, dealt with my hardware. Now, number three, I can untie. My gear. stuff, isn't it? Now, this worked real well because this fish could have just spent however many hours weaving, weaving this line around branches, but a significant enough weight on the bottom away from the brush has prevented that from happening. And that is a blue cat. We've got blue cats working this, this tree line. I didn't know that previously.
grunting going on. Super pale. Been in extremely muddy water, probably deep for most of the winter. Oh man, I would say that's going to be a lot of eggs laid. That's a beautiful girl. That is a, a belly. That is, yeah, that's going to be eggs, I believe. Nice. Now, how I threw this out, it is on the bottom. And it is away from the brush line because we have water movement. This is flooding condition. This is spring. We can have water movement. If it's just simply hanging, any debris that would come up with shifting wind or current would just pull that up into the branches and you wouldn't have a well-presented bait. The second thing, that is very advantageous on having that anchored to the bottom with a weight is that if you do get a bite, there's 20, maybe 20 feet of line out. The weight, in my case, the brick, will position the hook downward for the hook set. That is a great way to connect with a hook set on a catfish is a downward, backward direction of pull. It's much, I believe that it is better direction to have the hook pull than from top as far as getting a good hook set in the mouth. Thirdly, a good weight on the bottom is going to absorb the energy of the fish otherwise if it was a lightweight with this kind of brush it would macrame the lines around submerged structures and you wouldn't get your line back ready to move on one secure the boat completely two deal with your hardware your tackle. Three, proper tie on and toss. Now four, we're ready to easily untie and move on. Okay, when I tied that off, I was pretty quickly uh, swinging my boat around, so I don't have to worry about it now that I'm tied off. Are you kidding me? You're three for three on these suckers. I get my net. Well, went from being real slow. did I know? I didn't. You gotta, you gotta do it. And that's another blue cat. These blue cats are up here hunting something. Another 
nice blue cat actually. Nice, nice blue cat here. Oh, nice boy. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a nice fish here. Oh, baby. That one actually is probably more than 10 pound. That is, yeah, that is. That one's gonna go a bit heavier than 10. Ah, oh, beauty. That is a heck of a nice fish. Okay, this is the demonstration of what to do if your line is fouled, hung up. It's not actually, but for the purpose of demonstration, it is. Okay, this one. Oh, can't get it. Oh, that's. Can't get that. Oof. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna lean over and be jerking. I am not going to. I can try to pry it out with a paddle break my paddle. Untie from the tree. I'm driving my tackle, I mean, from the tree. Tied to the boat. I may retie as I get position. Okay, I still have my line. It's not connected to the tree anymore. I'm going to release the boat. Swing this back end of this boat out. So I'm pulling away. No. Okay, I am free from the tree, but I am still snagged. stress. Motor and boat's doing the work. This is either going to pull itself free or it's going to break. Either way, easy peasy. I'm going to show you how I rig the limb lines for um, exploratory high water uh, catfish locating. This is this is actually the line we just caught that 10 pound 
blue cat on for a weight to anchor the line where you want it to be a brick is pretty good something similar to that weight there are places where you won't even uh, hang anchor a line with a brick depending on the current um, how do you tie a brick? I just simply uh, had some plastic fence roll, cut some pieces, um, tied it around. So that secured the brick on all sides. Then I could tie my limb line, the foot of my limb line to that. Okay, so that's gonna be on the bottom. About three feet. That's a, that, that could be preference, but anyhow, up from the weight, the anchor, I've got a bite or a loop made from a figure eight knot. I haven't had to cut the line. I don't have any metal tackle on there. Um, kind of reduces snagging. You have a little bit less tangle if you keep less uh, hardware on there. I'll show you, I'll make another one just to show you. Here's a bite. Figure eight. Simply do a loop like you're gonna do a granny knot or an overhand knot. Flip that one extra time. There's an extra twist around there. Bring it through. So it's a granny knot with an extra twist around there comes into a figure eight. You can practice this pretty easy. Uh, there is some some big advantages uh, to using a figure eight on a bite. Um, it really, because of the way the um, tension shifts, if you get tension this way, it doesn't roll. Um, it's just, it's, it's, it's super. Have a good amount there. Make sure you can easily get your thumb through. You take your snelled uh, rig leader, like I show you in another video when I get to it. Go over the loop on your main line, your limb line. So you have threaded the bite through the swivel eye. Now you take your hook through the, the bite on the limb line. You're just connecting two circles, two loops basically, like that. You can roll it up. Line's gonna be like that. Um, it kind of, it's nice also because it doesn't really have an additional place to uh, put tension on the lines. Now you can have as much stress or pressure on this line as could possibly happen, but you're not gonna have trouble removing your hook because it's simply unconnecting the two loops, the two rings. You're gonna back it up enough that you can bring your hook back through that loop and then slide it off. I recommend you always take your hooks off before you wrap and stow your lines. It's, it's a hassle. The hook should be stowed separate. They shouldn't be hanging off of other lines. How much line? I think for this kind of thing, you need at least 30 feet. Is there gonna be times when you don't use that much? Sure. There's gonna be times you wish you had more, then you can extend it. But I'm just wrapping this up to stow it. Does not have to be a brick, does not have to be this type of weight. Uh, that amount of weight equal to a brick seems to be pretty good. Use whatever you need, scrap, 
iron. Uh, I wouldn't recommend having that much lead. You're going to be losing a lot of lead. What is the main line? This is, oh, I actually like braided a little better, but this is a little heavier, thicker than your normal chalk line type of line. Not that uh, it has to be stronger than a typical chalk line, but that, that uh, small stranded nylon, twisted strands, it's hard to work with. It can cut your fingers if you have pressure on there. It also tangles up into knots easier. So I would get the step up. This is like a 280 pound test. This one happens to be a nice three strand twisted, but I like the braided a little more because it's even less likely to, to knot up. ID tags for limb lines. Plastic from fabric softener or laundry liquid laundry detergent bottles. Seems to hold a marker pretty well. So if you cut up one of those bottles, I've had uh, good luck with being able to write on it with the black permanent marker and have it uh, stay on there for quite a while. Then you can just drill holes through for your line. So that's a nice way to have long lasting tags. Taking a pee on the boat. That's nice. And to do it right on the front. Anything else, Oakley? And there's our eagle. That's an immature. Eagle. Can I get him in there? That's our bonus for today. Big old immature eagle. And dog urine all over the boat. Always worth going out. 